We were just about to go test, probably for the last time in 2024. Lucky that we didn't make it there. been really dialing the car in when we were racing this weekend we had something go wrong with a couple of the mods that we were going to install today but when i was getting ready to finalize everything and head back to the track we're just basically lucky that we didn't make it there so let me show you what's going on actually installed today was we were going to start taking travel out of our white car so this is what we'll talk about real quick first and these are the team z travel limiters we got about six and a half to seven inches travel that we actually leave on on the line and that's really cool for some no prep and we've done pretty well with the car we had been getting ready to install travel limiters and what this would actually do and it's basically just a bracket and some chain weld here to your frame rail and there's another little gusset that you can weld to this control arm and it keeps the travel it limits the travel of the strut this is a must when you're doing a lot of racing and this is just something good to have especially when you have a unique suspension setup like we have here at the white car we feel pulling about three inches of travel out of it to start we could probably pick up some et with the back but let me show you what we found that pretty much finished the year for us and i'm always talking about a nut bolt check and a safety check every time we go out to race when we come back regardless if it's one pass or if it's five passes we throw it up on the lip real quick, take a quick check. We obviously go through our suspension stuff. We always check our struts and our springs and we always check our ball joints and basically anything that could steer me into the wall. And most of the times we'll go over it with like wrenches. I don't have anything super pretty and that's okay, it's functional. We're always checking motor mounts and we're checking anything that could be of an issue. Drive shaft bolt. We're always checking up in our torque boxes to make sure they're not pulled out and make sure our bolts aren't bent. Here's what we found. So I'm getting ready to finish up, you know, my check. I wasn't even going to come back here and look because I had already looked before we went to plates and 28s. But I'm really glad that I did because I was looking over here at my axle. I always check my strut and I check my links and my anti-roll bar. And I just happened to look over here and this is what I found. This is crazy. I don't think I've ever seen this. I don't know when this broke or when this cracked, but this is your lower control arm perch. This thing comes detached from that 8.8 .8 axle. This thing is gonna go right into a wall. So I, I don't think I've ever seen, I've heard cars like steer right into the wall. And this is just the importance of the safety check every time. Now I know not everybody has a lift. Is you, if your car has subframes on it and you're racing it, you could stick a jack right in the middle of the subframes and probably jack the whole car up and take five minutes to take a peek at this shit. You know, this car makes about a thousand wheel torque. The 8.8 .8 axle is perfectly fine. Bracing your axle and welding the tubes, super duper important, but this is a homemade brace that we had made and done. These aren't leaf spring perches. Those are just perches that I put on there for my weights for no prep. But if you remember, we were doing an axle. We did an axle video where we reinforced and rebuilt the axle in the black car. This is where that Team Z brace comes in really good here. And I'm gonna show you. Let me go ahead and get this thing out of the box. This is the Team Z brace, and I'll show you how well and what probably could have prevented that. So where this actually makes sense for some of you folks that don't have your axle uh, braced, the Team Z bar's already got a gusset, which I'll show you here in a second. It's already got the bar pre-bent and ready to weld in. And I'm pretty sure that if I would have put the Team Z brace on this axle and cut the old one off, that I probably wouldn't be sitting here with a, with a broken perch and I would be putting travel limiters in and do a little stick shift racing and testing out there at the track. Yep, definitely a pretty nice piece. And like I've said, I've showed this before in my other axle videos and here's the part number or here's what it is from Team Z. But dude, this brace comes with a little gusset that goes in the middle of the housing. Here, I'll show you. Just like we did on the other axle, you can see this, this brace goes right up into the axle. You can see how it comes over here and touches these perches. When you weld it up, it come up and touch the uh, three inch tube and it welds to the perch. And that probably would have saved me from breaking as this would have all been welded together. 
when you put the brace on, there's a little gusset here that goes and kind of ties it all into the housing. Pretty nice little setup. It only runs you a couple hundred bucks. I mean, not even that. I mean, sure, you can bend your own bar and do your own thing, but these are already pre-notched and ready to assemble. I'll go outside and show you the coops housing that we've been messing with and show you how it looks. We did this on the black car already, and you can see this thing just literally sits right in place. I would have welded it all in, tied it in, fit it up, and made it fit. And then you could weld the gusset like right here in the middle and tie everything in. Now, Team Z also sells the shock perches that they're replaceable. They're anti-squat replacement you nail know, brackets that have like eight holes in them. And MAF Racing also sells one similar to that. That's I think that's a bolt-in and weld-in setup. Regardless of which one you use, bracing your axle, welding your tubes, there's also a brace in the front. I mean, this is stuff that you want to do, you know, before actually doing a nine inch, if you're going to try to make power on an 80, that's, that's a no brainer. Now this winter, we're going to be setting this axle up for the coupe and getting it installed. Cause this is probably going to be our first mod for the winter as we're not going to take the axle out of our white car. We're just going to fix it and we're going to put it back in. But so yeah, I think we got pretty, pretty lucky there folks. I can't stress enough checking your shit over, making sure it's right. If you drive it hard, you do a lot of burnouts, you do Brodies. Whatever you're doing in your Fox body, even if you're just daily driving it, check your bushings, check your torque boxes. I mean, you never know when something like that's going to show up. Not only will your car start riding funny, but that is a very dangerous situation in a car that has a little bit of horsepower because it will send you right off the road into traffic or even hit a wall. I just needed to show you this in this film so I can make sure you guys are aware. I'm always trying to bring stuff to the channel, especially safety shit. I've never seen that before. Had I built it right the first time years ago, would have had this brace on it, would have had uh, better perches, and we wouldn't have had this problem. I mean, you don't expect to have to come into these problems when you first build stuff like this. These are growing pains. When the car starts performing and making really good horsepower and starts utilizing all the pieces to it, these are some things that can happen. So if you're gonna build an 8.8 axle, buy the brace, gusset it, weld up these perches, or replace them, if you're going coil over, you'll need to get those brackets, spherical bushings up top. There's a lot of important things that can make this axle perform really well. We're not gonna be racing it tonight. We were looking forward to putting our travel limiters on and taking about three inches of travel and launching it on 60 foot with a two-step, which probably would have put us about a foot and a half in the air. Maybe. But for now, we're gonna head to the track. We're gonna grab some E85 and fill up all of our jugs, about 50 gallons, because right now the E85 mix is really good here in Ohio. All right, so we got over here to the speedway and I'm gonna have this for the uh, the winter. Uh, it's usually about E90. We're about to test it here real quick. The pump gas E85 fuel that we use for racing has saved us a lot of money over the years. It kind of makes sense to build the fuel system even though it's kind of expensive, but at 289 a gallon, it's a lot better than paying 10 or $20 a gallon. And the fuel works pretty well. So we're on our way to Kunle Motorsports Park. This is our local track that we race at and test at. Meeting up with our buddy Dan Watts at Dan Watts Racing as he's getting ready for Mod Nats. Has a one-off blower set up in his car. Dan Watts definitely has one bad street car here. The world's fastest IRS stick shift blower, Cobra, and he has one unique blower set up on it. He's here testing tonight. This is one of his better passes. Link above that you can check out his video on his channel. It definitely would have been cool to go to the track tonight, work on the two-step, work on the launch, but I'm really kind of glad that we didn't. That could have ended really bad. We could have been easily sitting on a trailer all banged up from where the car hit the wall on one of the last passes of the year. 
Regardless, it's a good night. We got a chance to go out to the track and hang out with some of our friends and watch them make some passes down the track for once and just relax and not worry about it. We'll be back at it just as soon as we get back to the shop. We'll get that perch fixed and reinforced. We'll start building on the other axle and start getting ready for the coop build. Pretty excited about this winter and this coop build as I think this is going to be a game changer for the channel. So stay tuned. Hit that subscribe if you haven't already. Check out that join button. Become a member of the channel today. Get exclusive content to the channel. Got some merch at neomusslings.com. Got some really cool hats and t-shirts. But outside of that, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you soon in the next one.